one of the fascinating things about crypto is that it came not through the institutional markets where most of the financial product development takes place. Most of the financial product development in the globe takes place in the U.S. in our institutional markets. Crypto, digital assets, really came globally and at the retail level. So the development was something very new for, I would say, regulators across the globe in the way that it, in the way that it came about. And there have been a lot of old lessons relearned and new lessons learned. You know, one of the, one of the old lessons relearned and, and, and learned in a tough way was that when you raise money from the general public in America, that's an incredibly rigorously regulated transaction. We, we protect the public from securities offerings in an incredibly rigorous way. Mm -hmm. And this was, this was the ICO craze and the like. And <laughs> no, I think that those regulations have, have been shown. Um, on the other side, what I think regulators have had to learn is that this technology could be, and it's in many ways has become a step change for existing processes and some new processes, including what I would say is the rise of stablecoin, which is one of the more remarkable developments in finance um, in the last decade. Well, stablecoin has proven to be a, a, an astonishing facilitator of dollar-based global transactions in, in that you can now do dollar-based transactions around the globe in very little time with very little friction. As compared with, you know, wire transfers, um, money transfers, taking hours or days and requiring, um, you know, what I would say is lots of fees and the like, stablecoin transactions take place virtually instantaneously and with very low friction. And what we're seeing is a tremendous amount of retail dollar transaction take up outside the United States. I think this is an incredibly bullish thing for the dollar around the globe. And one that our regulators really need to focus on, because the benefits of dollar hegemony, the benefits of the dollar being the, the, the basis for transactions around the globe is so important to the United States. It's so important to the globe from a stability point of view. If there's a better technology to accomplish that, we should be figuring out how to facilitate. Tesla is a very different animal right now. You have a company that people are basically betting on whether it's a real AI company, humanoid ro robots, the future of autonomy, uh, or are they just a car company and they're gotten way ahead of themselves? And I think that's the sort of the forces that are sort of opposing and you see it run, then you see it pull back. You know, Al, what do you think it is? What do you think Tesla is? I think it's the AI company on a much longer horizon than most investors want to believe. I think he's going to get there. They're solving big problems with electrification, with power, uh, with these humanoid robots. But everything he said throughout his entire tenure has been off by a matter of years in many cases. So are we going to get there? Yes. What's your horizon? If it's longer, you're probably in good shape. Van Eck last week had a report out saying that Bitcoin could go to 52 million by 2050 if it became a reserve asset around the world. You've never thought 52 million, have you? I mean, the sky's the limit. I'm here for it, Charles. Um, you know, this their bull case is similar to what Michael Saylor forecasted over the weekend. Right. And price predictions are pretty difficult 25 years out. But I think what this means is that large asset managers are recognizing how early we are and the potential opportunity here and Bitcoin's ability to accrue and store value over the long run. Over the weekend, Van Eck CEO also said that 30% of his own personal net worth is in Bitcoin. Wow. So when you think about the hundreds of trillions of dollars out there in global wealth and assets, Bitcoin represents less than 1% of that pie today. So I think it's safe to say that by 2050, Bitcoin is poised to command a huge chunk of global wealth, especially if you understand that they're going to have to keep printing and debasing the currency. So as Satoshi wisely put it, you might as well get some just in case. All right. So I Welcome to the crypto teacher. And you know I come back with that video just to make you think. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And make sure you join the patrons. If you're not a part of patrons, make sure you're hitting the cash out. And also make sure that you go to TikTok, follow and like. And this channel, like and spread it everywhere. And we have Jay Powell on stablecoins. And at first, guys, when it comes to crypto, and we get it every now and then, everybody wants to talk about the price of Bitcoin. But we have Jay Powell, 
and others now talking about the fundamentals of the ecosystem. And we know the major one is stable coins because stable coins allow the central banks to keep the same power, but even strengthen it because these stable coins are going to be programmable. And stable coins allow real-time settlement, less fees. That's the reason why these small and medium-sized banks can't survive. That's the reason why we have Basel III and the funding requirements because liquidity is going to be the name of the game. But stable coins are going to change everything because stable coins are going to tell you what, when, when, and how to buy. And you have three to six months to spend them or poof, they're gone. And stable coins are going to allow them to give that universal basic income, universal high income, whatever you want to call it. So with all this global debt, they're just going to turn it into equity and start passing it out like Ray Dalio told us a long time ago. And that's going to buy them time for the actual metaverse. And we know in the metaverse, nothing is going to be real. You're going to be printing food. You're going to be printing your clothes if the sheep don't wake up. And we have prediction after prediction when it comes to Bitcoin. But like I told you, if Bitcoin gets pegged to the machines, sky's the limit. And remember the crypto teacher told you, because he knows when it comes to the NWO, it's all planned out. You have a wonderful day. Going to a different economy, and we're going to be learning more about that uh, as we go, but clearly... We're, we're, we're learning that things can be done uh, from remote, remote locations. We're learning that technology can replace people even more than we thought. We're not going back to the same economy. We're, going, we're recovering, but to a different economy. And it'll be one that is more leveraged to technology. And I worry that that is going to make it even more difficult than it was for, for many workers. In Silicon Valley and my friends who work in technology know that what we did to the manufacturing workers, we are now going to do to the retail workers, the call center workers, the fast food workers, the truck drivers, and then even bookkeepers, accountants, uh, insurance agents, lawyers, and on and on through the economy. So what happened to the manufacturing workers is a very clear sign. And so we'll import Chinese-based CBDC technology. So it's going to be CBDC in a box. Uh, provided to you by the People's Bank of China. But every stock, every bond, every currency, every commodity, every piece of art, every private business, every piece of real estate will eventually be a token on a blockchain, an entry on a ledger, permanent and immutable. We will have truth instead of trust, and we will save over $7 trillion a year. Six to 8% of global GDP is wasted by the friction of the trust industry that's necessary when you have dual entry accounting. With triple entry accounting, which is what a blockchain is, mm -hmm. we get rid of all of that friction. It's a beautiful future. Like what you see in China and their social credit scoring systems, right? If we get identity wrong, you know, it could be a tool to enslave humanity. And if we get it right, it could be a tool to liberate humanity as an American, you know. Uh, uh, I'm obviously rooting for the, the one that's on the side of freedom. Bitcoin is an international asset. And also, I do believe the role of crypto is, um, it is, it, it is it's digitizing gold. I actually believe this technology is going to be very important. I am, I, you know, look at it. We have been part of a huge revolution in investing through ETFs. We believe that ETFs will be changing the whole way we invest. Many people still use it as a means, well, people are investing it f for indexing. No, the majority of people who are putting money in an index, in an ETFs are active investors that are buying exposure. The entire bond market is being transformed as we talk right now. I believe the next generation for markets, the next generation for securities will be, will be tokenization of securities. Um, we will, and if we could have that distributed ledger that we know every beneficial owner, every beneficial uh, seller, we all have our, our, our code right. of who's buying, who's selling, instantaneous settlement. 
And think about it, it changes the whole ecosystem. Chinese bank ICBC has been hit by a ransomware attack, and the U.S. Treasury market, as a result of that, um, has been disrupted. This, according to the Financial Times, we're, we're getting more right now with Bloomberg's Shanali Basic. Shanali, what do we know? Uh, listen, we have the Financial Times now reporting that ICBC, one of China's largest banks here, was hit with a ransomware attack. And remember, they're a, a very significant intermediary in the Treasury market. The SIFMA has told as members that this has been part of the reason here uh, that the system is kind of clogged up, if you will, during that auction that we saw a little bit before. The attack had prevented ICBC, according to the Financial Times, from settling treasury trades on behalf of other market participants. A large executive at a major bank also telling the paper that such a large party on the fixed income clearing corp uh, creates major concerns, potentially impacting the liquidity of treasury markets. Now it was not just the poor auction. It was absolutely lousy, and, and uh, uh, you know, when, when the dealers have to step in to save a treasury auction, uh, that's a rare occurrence. And Crypto teacher and the new world order book, plus the three kids books, it's time to re-educate. Also, new to cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance. Do not forget book links and crypto links are in the description. The stock channel, guys. Don't forget to go like, subscribe, spread everywhere. You have your Kobo, your chip size, your banking, your gaming, while everybody's sitting at home, get home stocks, the receiver, the biotech stocks, and while everybody's at home wishing, they were still getting that free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks, and you have a wonderful day. The most powerful person in the world is the storyteller. The storyteller sets the vision, values, and agenda of an entire generation to come. Steve Jobs. And guys, you know I truly believe in this. When you look at the New World Order, they're the storytellers. And that's the reason why I wrote my New World Order book. But guys, now it's time to change the current generation. And I wrote three kids books. You know, I love the Trinity because I understand the power that's in it. So I have three books. We have an opportunity to change the generation, to educate, not just me, but I want to show you that I take action on a daily basis. And I want you to take action on a daily basis, whether it's your job, whether it's in your community. We have an opportunity right now to educate the masses. I posted this on my Twitter account. Please share. But this is a short clip of the three books. There's going to be a clothing line and action figure. Please get these books for your kids, nephews, cousins, friends. So therefore, we can start the re-education now. Because as we see, the fourth industrial revolution foundation is definitely here. Robots, algorithms, drones, taking humanity out the picture. We have to re-educate. But let's get into the video. Part 1. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save the village. Part 2. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Save New York. Long COVID-33. Part 3. King Joshua and Grandma Tim. Goes to China. It's mandatory to get Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3 of this series. It's time to re-educate Generation Z.